Good afternoon and welcome to Arkansas Children's. I'm Rebecca Brockman and this afternoon I'm joined by Dr. Nicholas Long. He is our Director of Pediatric Psychology and today we are going to talk about mental health which is obviously a topic on a lot of families' minds. Uh, it's, it's been a very difficult time lately and so we wanted to talk about the long-term, short-term effects that this pandemic and this crisis is having especially on kids and teens and their families. So we brought in our expert, um, Dr. Long, welcome. Thank you. So mental health is an important topic all the time, mm -hmm. but it seems even pre-pandemic we were talking about this, but especially now, it's something that's, that is everywhere. Why is it more important now than it has been before? I think we've seen a lot of headlines over the past few years, things like depression is the leading cause of disability in the world now that the second leading cause of death for individuals between the ages of 10 and 34 is suicide. So we're seeing a lot of attention put onto it. What's really important, I think, is that there's growing recognition of the interface between mental health and physical health. That in the past, people kind of looked at them as separate things. Now we realize that they're intertwined and impact each other. And in fact, impact healthcare costs, which is of course a major issue for our society. For instance, they did a study uh, recently looking at millions of children with chronic health problems in the US. And what they found that when those individuals, children had a mental health condition in addition to a chronic physical health condition, that their costs were two and a half times as much than those children that didn't have the mental health problems. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is that the extra cost wasn't primarily a result of mental health treatment. It was extra cost for the physical health side. So we're seeing that, we're seeing a lot of folks on what people are referring to as ACEs or adverse child experiences during their childhood. Now that can impact health years later. So all of these things combine during this crisis to create a lot of stress and we know that there's a relationship between stress and mental health. So I definitely w want you to talk about the long term eventually, uh, but short term, um, I'm a mom, I have little kids, mm -hmm. and so my four-year-old is asking questions, my seven-year-old is asking more mm -hmm. uh, detailed questions. How does something like a pandemic affect these little brains short term? You know, we don't really know it is quite uh, is the, the frank answer. There's research going on now, so in coming months and years, we'll have a better feel for this pandemic, because this is different than other things that we've had. We've had SARS, but it didn't have the prevalence of this. We weren't isolated. Uh, so we don't know. We know during SARS that it didn't have much of an impact on children, but children weren't really affected. We know that providers and those individuals that contracted SARS did have mental health problems. So we have to look at other major stressors. So when you look at natural disasters, 9-11, uh, those types of things, we know that when there's high stress during events like that, that there is an increase in mental health concerns. Now, that doesn't mean that every child is going to have difficulty. It's some children are more prone to that stress than others, and especially children that have pre-existing mental health problems. If you have a child who is already anxious or depressed and something like this comes along, then you're typically going to see an increase in those symptoms and, and the depression or anxiety or whatever the problem may be get worse. Uh, the good news is that many children are resilient and a lot of this is going to depend on how long this goes on. You know, we thought we were kind of getting over this and now there's more uncertainty. Uncertainty creates a lot of stress. We don't know what's going to happen. And in this case, we know that it's just not the anxiety about getting the uh, COVID-19. It's also the financial impact on families. And we know when families are under a lot of financial stress, that's not good for kids. We know that there's the isolation too. So all of these things combine to present something very unique here. Uh, my guess is as the research is done is that we'll find that most kids are pretty resilient and do okay. But there are going to be certain groups of kids that do struggle because of this. Okay, that is that is good to hear, especially from a mom's perspective. If you do have a question for Dr. Long, make sure to leave it in the comments section. Uh, this afternoon we're talking about mental health. We just talked about the short term. Let's talk, and I do want to talk about the long term, but what advice do you have for parents, uh, moms and dads who are watching about talking to their children and teens about emotions and feelings? It's First of all, don't assume that all children are struggling. 
Uh, and I think if we come from that perspective, uh, it's important for us to make sure that we stay calm and we don't let our own fears and anxieties influence our children, especially young children, because they're going to look at those around them to determine how scared or how anxious should they be. So it's really important for parents to be calm and reassuring, just that we're looking after you, we're taking all these precautions, this too will pass. And I, I think that having that attitude is really important, especially with young children that don't are typically not in touch with their emotions and feelings as older kids. With older kids and talking to them, it's really important to do less talking and more listening and ask questions, find out what they're thinking as opposed to kind of imposing your own beliefs or, or thoughts on them. So listen a lot, have discussions with them and help them build resilient skills, help them kind of work through this and be reassuring as a parent. Okay, I, I like that. That's something I can practice right when I get home. Uh, long term, how is this experience, uh, the social isolation, being out of school, um, no summer activities, or at least they're postponed right now, how is that going to affect our kids? Again, it's really unclear. It really depends on how long this is going to, to, to take place. I mean, are kids going to be going back to school in the fall? Mm -hmm. Are we going to see an attempt to do that, and then it fails, and they're out of school? Uh, you know, there's, there's hope that by this time next year we'll have a vaccine and, and everything will be fine. So there is going to be an end to this. It's not something that's going to go on for years. Uh, but the longer it goes on, it disrupts children's normal life. It's more likely to have long-term effects. But again, just on a small segment of children will it have a long-term impact. And that's more children who may not have the social support. So it's children that are less resilient. Uh, and resiliency is really you know, we know some people are able to handle adversity and bounce back pretty quickly. And others struggle as adults and children the same way. So those children that are less resilient may have longer term problems with anxiety or depression. So as parents, it's really important to try to build those resiliency skills. And one of the most important things is to strengthen your relationship with your child because we know that one of the things that can really mediate the impact of major stress on children is a strong relationship with a parent. So have, we've got time with our kids now more, or grandkids, and spend that time, work on that relationship. It's so important. And then also, children are more resilient when they know things that they can do, that they feel in control. So to make sure we talk about hand washing and you're wearing masks and social distancing and practice that in front of your children really reinforce your children when they're doing that. So teach them something that they can do to try to help stop the spread of uh, the coronavirus. This, this is excellent advice. Um, again, personally, I'm benefiting. Hopefully you at home are watching. I think just in, in closing, and we did get a comment from Kimberly who said she's watching from Jonesboro. So thank you, Kimberly. Um, that's the beauty you can watch um, around the state, around the country. Um, I think in closing, as we do head to the summer months and summer plans are postponed, they're canceled. How does everyone stay sane and stay healthy for the next couple of months? So I think one of the things is we've got to focus on the things that we have control over. Mm -hmm. As parents, we don't have control over what's going to happen in the fall with classes or what's going to happen during the summer with certain events. So focus on what we do have control over and try to focus on more day to day. Maintaining a routine is really important. Make sure that we all get enough sleep, that we eat healthily and that we exercise as parents and as children and have fun together. You know, we have more time with our kids now in most cases and use that time because this is an opportunity that probably won't come around again for a long, long time of having more time with our children to have fun. And we know that when we have fun with our kids, that relationship deepens and it helps children be more resilient and helps them throughout their life. Excellent. That is perfect advice. And um, as we head into the weekend and the summer months, um, it is. It's easy to head outside, go to the park, um, go hiking, go walking with your, with your family. So thank you, Dr. Long, for your time and for your insight into mental health. If you do have a question that you think of afterwards, please leave it below and we'll make sure it gets to you. Uh, but in the meantime, be safe, wash your hands, wear your mask, and be healthy. Thanks for watching.